How does it feel to work with a guy that doesn't know he's a, doesn't think he's an actor? <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm very used to it. Okay. Actually, I've always worked with people who knew less than me. Okay. Yeah, even going back to you know, uh, you know, dragging my little brother out, and uh, you know, like, little little brothers are good for. Uh, having learning experiences. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I never had a little brother. I had big sisters. So uh, it was a little bit different for me because well, I, when I was real little, they treated me like a doll. They curled my hair, mm -hmm. put makeup on me. And figured, so, well, you, as you know, I'm primarily a nerd first. You know, it's yeah. been around on that type of, type of stuff. So. This is a new experience. I've enjoyed working with you, Andrew. It's, uh, it's been a learning experience, and I like the uh -huh. fact that you're detail-oriented. Yeah, I uh, can't seem to think any other way. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, one of the things that we're doing here with this programming logic type thing is to show kind of how we nerds think. Mm -hmm. You know, we think in order, we think in trying to get things complete. If things don't work, we change. I mean, that's that's probably a little bit different than a lot of people. I mean, it's that's how I do it. I mean, it's... Well, yeah. We tend not to necessarily think emotionally either when we're working on a project. Well... I said see, tend. See, that, there's a different way of showing See, emotion. I am... Um, my background with my family is that we, you know... I come from a computer engineering family. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was brought up with, uh, uh, like, the um, Amiga, a... 1,000, I think. That kind of taught me, it was like, you can, like, do, like, uh, play games, you could, it was in color, which, back in 84, the, even the Mac wasn't in color. No. And I always liked writing stories, writing poetry. Okay. Um, on the computer. And that kind of gave me way to see how using technology can be an outlet for other creative artistic means. Well, you know, I've had my, both my sisters are musicians, and one was saying uh, she didn't necessarily like all this new stuff with the uh, synthesizers and, the, you know, all of that type of stuff. And I said, well, okay, her name was Clarella. Everybody called her Clara, except for the family. But I used to say, now, do you think if Mozart had all these tools to work with, that he would have stuck just with the orchestra? He would have used everything to his disposal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, Beethoven yeah, probably had, would. I, I know Mozart would have. Beethoven probably would have. I mean, they had a, he had a piano. I mean, he did operas. Mm -hmm. he, he was very... Mozart was very theatrical. Mm. Uh, yeah, and you take a look, you know, wonder what Mozart could have done with uh, Frozen. Okay, yeah. You know, just what's, you know, it would have been different, but mm -hmm. it would have been good because he would have used the current style and all of that type of stuff. And I think that's important that you and I, as we go along, we grow with the technology. Mm -hmm. We don't want to stay where the technology was five years ago. Right. We, I prefer to be two weeks ahead of it, but I'm happy to be six weeks behind. <laughs> so. Yeah, and specifically working with you, John, I find myself having to rethink how... How I would approach a problem. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when it comes to working with quote, non-talent. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a psychology problem to 
first of all, break the ice mm -hmm. with the person. Second of all, understand where they're coming from and what they want to accomplish. And then try and understand them well enough to direct a response that me as a viewer would like. And that's different with everyone. Yeah. However, working with with like groups of people is sometimes much much easier because you're more focused on the choreography or the main the, the main person in in the scene or what what have you. And your attention is on on the main talent and you kind of think of everyone else as supporting actors. Yes, I understand. Okay, I'm, I'm trying not to brag, but I don't think I, uh, I think I take criticism well. Okay? I may get frustrated, but it's more of myself and the mm -hmm. criticism, because my goal, whenever I'm trying to do something, my goal is to get better at it and to provide what the people want. Right. Okay, that's my goal, and you know, having done what I've done in my life, working with teams and working with this and that, you don't get better if you just say, mm -hmm. no, do it my way, the highway. I mean, it just doesn't work. I mean, I think, I think together we work back and forth fairly well, so. Yeah, um, and I guess starting off with um, our referrals. Mm -hmm. That definitely, I guess, broke the ice in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I mean, we worked together. I think you were a little surprised. Oh, I know you were surprised when I called you to ask you to do some work together and to ask you to take the PCs apart and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I know, I know that surprised you. So. Oh, certainly. Yeah, I. Um, I thought, okay, he's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. The two shall never mix. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't, it, you know, he's doing one thing, I'm doing the other, we'll never meet each other. Yeah. And I was, you know, that was fine. And then... Then you called, I remember mean, you sent a message out of the blue, and I'm like, okay, who's, who, who is he? And, I mean, with you, it was pretty easy, because I knew your business already, so yeah. I was like, yeah, whatever. Okay, I'll come down. <laughs> um... And I guess my attitude over the years have has changed with because when I originally went into business for myself, I was you know really really focused on this type of work. Yeah, the video. And and I thought, well, you know, I'll be in my own little bubble and. I'll create, I'll create my own things, and, but I didn't really have a game plan for how to be sustainable about that. And I guess over, over time, I've, you know, out of necessity, had to have relationships with other people. Yeah. And, and you just try it, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. And... And the more you do it, the faster you know if it works or it doesn't. <laughs> I know. That, well, that yeah, it's that you know that's the way things are. Uh, you know, me having worked with large companies and small companies, one of the things if you work with this large company, uh, on there you've, you have definitely have to have the relationships. But I think it's actually more important in a small town or a small area because you do do things and. You and I, now, you know, when I was doing stuff for Honeywell, it was pretty well focused. You know, I had to do a networking and this and that, but I didn't do re computer repair. Mm -hmm. Okay? The only computer repair I ever did was for my own fun at my house, for me. But then you come here, okay, you got to be, you know, I call it a jack-of-all-trade man, you know, type of things on here. So, you know, I have to know how to repair computers. I have to know how to do this. I have to know how to do that. You know, add these little things because there were 
it's not like we've got a lot of things. And the nice thing about having another techie in town mm-hmm. is the fact that I can bounce all ideas off you, and hopefully you can bounce ideas off me when needed. And uh, you know, it's just it's just it's just a having a feeling of backup more. You know, we're probably competition overlap about that much. You know, uh, between yeah. here and there. On that, so this much we're probably in competition. But most of all, I'd like prefer to think that eventually, you know, we could be, you know, together, working to do this different things, like me using your stuff for your ring studio talent and your other things and whatever you'd want to use me for. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, I'd like to wow. think of it that way, rather than direct competitors. Yeah. But even with the people I worked with, I was a little bit competitive. So that's that's my personality. Yeah, I can see that. So. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess I don't have a clear vision of where I see this relationship going. Yeah, well, I, I just I, sort of see it as it'll evolve. Yeah, we're always gonna have. You know, I'm always gonna have competition with you. You're always gonna have competition mm-hmm. with me. Yeah, it's just how it's gonna work. Yeah, I found very new cool with uh, doing all the video work with you is that. You have something that I don't have, like a green screen. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, even though at one point I was considering it, and I was like, I don't really have a need for it. But I'm, I'm seeing that as a benefit, for sure. And also, as you can tell, I'll probably rent you know, your, your conference room more. You know, when I need um, a space to do other recordings or... Yeah, like when you were doing that with music, your musician. Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, one thing, I've been watching a couple videos on you. I mean, uh, Facebook, Facebook videos right. on there. Sometimes I'd like to sit down and talk to you about a couple of those things that people are doing just to... It looks like they started out doing it for fun, and now it's turning into a little bit. The Ya Bet You videos where these people are making fun of living up north. Okay. And how people react to northerners, stuff like that. I mean, you should probably stop over and I'll show you what I'm talking about sometime. And then uh, a Facebook, produced by Facebook, was something I enjoyed. Uh, a little movie called The Birch is almost as much as I do, you know, the big time movies it was little episodic so about five minutes each and you know just try to work our originality in that area a little bit just to see if it would work so you know get on Facebook and look for the birch it's, interesting okay uh, it, that I don't want to do anything like that yeah. one particularly yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know, but, uh, and I can't remember the group that uh, does the You Betches, but, you know, we'll show you, show you that and just get the idea of maybe find, have some fun making the videos on the type of stuff like that. So, you know, and always, you know, you have to stay with the trends, with, mm-hmm. you know, you know, even, it's kind of hard to keep up with the trends with film and and computers, mm-hmm. it's it's like, and both of them are, both both technologies, I guess, are rapidly changing, well, all you, the time. Yeah. Well, you know, take a look what they did with the uh, um, Star Wars and uh, Princess Leia. You know, they had her right. in, had her in the movie after she died, <laughs> and uh, what's the name of that thing with? Uh, well, I've the one that was nominated I bet for they, an Oscar. Uh, filmed that. I bet they filmed her portions of the film before no. she died. No, they had another actress there and put her face on it. Oh, and wow! It. Okay, that was, that's no. pretty impressive. It is. I don't think we quite have the technology in sitting in here in Long Prairie to do that. Well. We don't have the supercomputer. But then there's this uh, new movie that just nominated for an Oscar from Netflix. Mm-hmm. in which they take people like De Niro and right. made him look like he was 20 again with the facial, uh, mm-hmm. you know, computer-generated well, computer facial stuff. So. You know, 
uh, Schwarzenegger was the f probably the first one they did that to. Uh huh. Back in uh, for Terminator Salvation or something oh, like yeah, that. Okay. Um, because they had to like get a younger version of his younger version of Schwarzenegger to put in all all of these Terminators in the factory. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and then, but you know that was like the start. Yeah. To the facial recognition. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I guess for movies, that's you know that works. But I don't, I think there's a like a fine moral line between well, between get, um, keep when people are re turning people from the dead. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, you know, if, if they had a digital scan of Errol Flynn, they would put it on the silver screen again. They probably would do that. <laughs> uh, so. um, thanks for this uh, Q&A. Yeah, it's I think It's certainly so. enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, we don't really just get down to talk, you know, like this very often. We're generally more, uh, shall we say, ob objective, directed, you know, trying to get our right. direction to get done what we want to get done. It was kind of fun. But it's also getting quite cold outside, and I think maybe I should get home. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs>